All right, today's screencast is going to be all about what's called elasticity. And the first of the two screencasts is going to focus on elasticity of demand. So what we're going to look at is price elasticity of demand, which is really defined as how much the quantity demanded of a good responds to a change in the price of the good. So remember, price of the good is in the, the independent variable. Quantity demanded is the dependent variable. So if the price changes, how much do consumers actually respond? And what it's really a measure of is how important is that good to consumers? How much do consumers value that good? Now, there are four basic determinants that help us determine whether a good has what we call elastic demand or inelastic demand. The first determinant is the availability of close substitutes. The second is, is the good a necessity or is it a luxury? The third is what we call the definition of the market. Now, definition of the market is really divided into two subcategories. We could ask ourselves, is the good a broadly defined market or is the good a narrowly defined market? Okay, so a broadly defined market is a market that there are many, many, many different types of goods inside that market. So an example of a broadly defined market might be food, right? That's a very broadly defined market. A narrowly defined market might be McDonald's, okay? Lots of substitutes for McDonald's, no substitutes for food. And then finally, the time horizon. So goods can be broken into two basic types of elasticity. We could have goods that are inelastic or elastic. A good is considered to be inelastic. When it has few substitutes, it's a necessity, it's a broadly defined market, and we're dealing with a short period of time. Examples, gasoline, food, water, okay? Inelastic demand, basically, the consumer, no matter how much they want to, they cannot respond to changes in price. So no matter what happens to the, the price of the good, in the short run at least, the consumer is going to go ahead and keep consuming. So the price of the good can go up a lot, but the consumer will continue to purchase. Now, elastic demand are products that have many substitutes. It's a luxury. It's not something you have to have. It's generally considered a narrowly defined market, and we're dealing with a long period of time. So examples might include a Porsche, uh, a luxury boat like a yacht, an iPhone or an iPod, okay? Generally goods that consumers don't have to have. Here when a product is elastic, the consumer is very responsive. Changes in price really motivate the consumer to either buy more of the good or buy less of the good depending on what the price does. Now, the way we calculate elasticity is basically we're going to find the slope of the line. Okay, we're going to find the slope, of, oops, the slope of the line. And the formula is going to be the percent change quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price. Now, normally in your algebra classes, you probably found the slope is rise over run. You'll notice here it's going to be run over rise. Okay, and the reason for that is if you remember, I talked about in the last lecture series, we flipped the price and quantity demanded. We put the independent variable on the Y and the dependent on the X, okay? So that's why we're gonna do run over rise. Now, when we're looking at elasticity of demand, the answer is always gonna be negative, uh, but we just use the absolute value. And ideally what we're gonna do is we're gonna use what's called the midpoint method. I'm sure you guys are familiar with this, okay? I'm sure you've probably seen it before in your algebra classes. And the midpoint formula, this is one of the few formulas you're going to be required to memorize in here. Q2 minus Q1 divided by, and here's the important part, there's a bracket and then a parenthesis, so you're going to have to remember your order of operations. Q2 plus Q1 divided by 2, all over the same formula for price. Okay? So once you run that formula, you're going to come up with a value that's going to be somewhere between 0 and infinity. Uh, negative, but we're going to use just the absolute value. So if you get an elasticity equal to zero, 
it's going to be straight up and down here regardless of what happens to the price the quantity demanded doesn't change this is called perfectly elastic demand okay straight up and down is called perfectly elastic demand if you get a value that's greater than zero but less than one here the change in price is significantly bigger than the change in quantity demanded. So big changes in price create small changes in quantity demanded. This is said to be inelastic, okay? These are goods that consumers will keep buying regardless of what happens to price. If you get an elasticity value equal to one, the demand curve will be at approximately a 45 degree angle. That's probably not the best representation, okay? When elasticity is equal to one, it's said to be unit elastic demand or unitary elastic demand. So here, the exact same change in price, percent change in price, is the exact same percent change in quantity demanded. If you get an elasticity greater than one but less than infinity, demand is said to be elastic. This is where consumers are very responsive to the change in price. So elasticity is greater than one but less than infinity. Uh, so here, large changes in quantity create relative or excuse me large small changes in price create relatively large changes in quantity demanded and finally if you get an elasticity equal to infinity demand is said to be what's called perfectly elastic it's going to be a horizontal line so price isn't going to change but you can purchase as many products as you want at that price and this is an actual market that we'll talk about uh, there's a situation where this would occur. Now, elasticity is very important because it's closely related to total revenue. Total revenue is the amount of income you get from selling a product. So if you were a business owner, uh, it's definitely to your advantage to understand something about the elasticity of demand for your product. Total revenue is going to be the area of the price of the good times the quantity sold. So let me show you a for example, okay? Uh, for example, in this model, if I'm selling four units of the, or pardon me, if I'm selling the good for $4, I could sell 100 units. My total revenue is gonna be four times 100. My total revenue will be 400. Now, elasticity is closely related to total revenue. Uh, depending on what type of demand, will indicate what you should do with your price. If you have a product with elastic demand, there's an inverse relationship between price and total revenue. So if you raise the price, the total revenue actually declines. Or if you lower the price, total revenue actually increases. And this happens because the percent change in quantity demanded is bigger than the percent change in price. When you have inelastic demand, by contrast, it's a direct relationship. So when you raise the price, you raise the total revenue. If you lower the price, you lower the total revenue. And this happens because the percent change in price is going to be larger than the percent change in quantity demanded. I can actually show you this on a graph. So here we have a product with inelastic demand at a price of a dollar, 100 units are sold, giving us a revenue of $100. If we raise the price to $3, we're selling fewer, fewer units, we're only selling 20, okay? However, excuse me, we're only selling 80, so we, we lose 20 units sold. However, because the percent change in price here is significantly bigger than the percent change in quantity demanded, my total revenue actually goes up to 240. And when it's elastic demand, it's the opposite. So at a price of $4, we sell 50 units, giving us a total revenue of 200 on this graph on the left. If we raise the price from four to five, Quantity demanded falls from 50 to 20, and revenue, by contrast, falls to 100. So if you have a product with inelastic demand, let's say gasoline, you're better off when you actually raise the price of the product. You're going to lose some customers, but you're not going to lose that many customers. If, by contrast, you have a product with elastic demand, let's say plasma screen televisions, you actually want to reduce your price because you're going to gain more customers than you're going to lose in price of the good because the percent change in quantity is bigger than the percent change in price. Now, there's one final type of graph that we need to talk about 
and that's called a linear demand curve. A linear demand curve is a special type of curve that has elastic, unit elastic, and inelastic demand all along the same curve, okay? So the top of the curve is elastic, the middle of the curve is unit elastic, and the bottom of the curve is inelastic. And what happens with the linear demand curve is as price decreases, total revenue rises as price falls through the elastic portion, it stays constant through the unit elastic, and then it falls through the inelastic portion. So this would be an example of a linear demand curve. Here at high prices, we're in the elastic range. So for example, at $8 or at $9, we sell one unit giving us a total revenue giving us a total revenue of nine. If we lower the price to $8, now we're selling two units and our total revenue goes up to 16. And total revenue rises all the way through the elastic portion right up until we get to the unitary elastic, which on this graph is $5 and five units for a total revenue of 25. If I continue to reduce my price here, okay, let's say I drop my price from $5 to $4, my quantity is gonna fall to six and my total revenue, by contrast, is gonna to start to decline. So this is a linear demand curve. It's elastic at high prices, unit elastic in the middle, inelastic at low prices. You'll often see as part of a long FRQ question, and unfortunately, your textbook doesn't really cover it at all. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna demonstrate how you might solve a couple of elasticity of demand problems. So here I have a elasticity problem. I have my graph drawn and I have my midpoint formula up on top, okay? So the key to solving these, it doesn't matter which one of these is price one and price two. It honestly doesn't matter. So let's say I'm going from A to B, okay? If I'm going from A to B, $5 would be price one, two units would be Q1. $2 would be price two. $4 would be Q2. And the reason we use the midpoint formula is we get the same answer going from A to B as we would from B to A. So once I've done this, once I've set up what's gonna be price one and quantity one, all I have to do is go ahead and insert these into my formula. So it's gonna be Q2, which is four minus two divided by bracket four plus two divided by two, Oops. okay? I'm gonna put this all over the same formula for my price, which is gonna be two minus five, divided by two plus five, divided by two, okay, four minus two, two, divided by four plus two divided by two, that's six. Okay, all over negative three over 3.5. Okay, from here I'm gonna need my calculator. So once I run my calculations, I come up with an answer of elasticity equals negative 0.38, okay? And I know because it's greater than zero but less than one, my demand has, or my curve has inelastic demand curve, or my curve is an inelastic demand curve, excuse me. Now, there is a little shortcut you can use uh, if you're in a pinch to kind of try to figure out in a hurry whether it's elastic or inelastic demand. What you can do if you're really in a hurry is you can look at what happens to revenue when you lower price. So at P1, my total revenue is gonna be five times two, that's $10. At P2, my total revenue is gonna be two times four, it's gonna be $8. So because total revenue falls as price falls, I can recognize that this is gonna be an inelastic demand curve. 
Whenever total revenue falls, as price falls, I can automatically recognize this is going to be an inelastic demand curve. Now, the second problem we have is going to be another elasticity problem. So I've already shown my elasticity. So at a price of $10, 10 units are demanded. At a price of $8, 30 units are demanded. So again, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decide which of these is going to be P1 and P2. It doesn't really matter, okay, because I'm using the midpoint formula. So this will be P1. $10 is going to be Q1. This will be P2. This will be Q2. Now, what I'm going to do is, again, set up the midpoint formula. So it'll be 30 minus 10 Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. And once again, I'm going to need my calculator. So now once I've gone ahead and simplified this, I can solve my elasticity problem. So my elasticity here is going to equal 4.54, negative 4.54, but again I'm only going to use the absolute value, so I'm going to go ahead and throw that negative sign away, and because elasticity is greater than one but less than infinity my elasticity is going to be elastic okay and again I could also use the quickie kind of midpoint formula here uh, if price or excuse me the quickie total re revenue formula if price falls what happens to total revenue so at p1 price is ten dollars quantity is 10 units that would give me a revenue of a hundred dollars at p2 price is eight dollars quantity is 30 units that gives me a revenue of $240. And if price is falling, is total revenue is rising, okay, if price falls and total revenue rises, I know my product has elastic demand, okay? So the key to solving these elasticity of demand problems is first thing you have to do is find what's gonna be your P1 and Q1. Doesn't matter which one you choose, that's the beauty of the midpoint formula. And then just go ahead and program those, those numbers into the midpoint equation. So you're gonna, you are gonna need to memorize the midpoint formula. In the next video, we're gonna look at three other types of elasticity. But once you master elasticity of demand, the other elasticities are actually very easy to solve.